Ann Fisher. Thank you so much. We are just thrilled to be with you again because we appreciate everything that you do. Thank you. It's well, great to be with you today. Thank you. Well, and you're a tremendous encouragement to, to us because you're the millennial generation that everybody says, hey, we've lost them. We can't count on them. They're gone. Uh, well, they're not into patriotism. They're not into faith. They're not into any of that stuff. Yeah, no point. Guess, give up on them. And you guys are millennials uh, that thanks. are demonstrating that both faith and patriotism are alive and well. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yeah, Stacy and I were very, very passionate about uh, stepping up and, and helping our our fellow millennials understand uh, the importance of patriotism and hard work, prayer, and faith, you know, and that's right. Uh, pointing and, and veteran appreciation. Yeah. Uh, so all of that uh, encompasses the America and our history. Well, let's turn, our, let's turn our attention to the issue I wanted to bring the two of you on to talk about, and that has to do with the opening of the 9-11 Memorial Museum. It opened on uh, Tuesday. And there's another issue that's sort of connected to this 9-11 memorial that the two of you have weighed in on. You started a yes. movement called I Stand With the Cross, a yes. Facebook page devoted, devoted to that. So tell us uh, what the issue is here. Well, thank you so much. The issue here is, is very, uh, I would say it's just like a tip of the iceberg, what we're, what we're seeing because as the, uh, a group of atheists are suing for the removal of the cross, uh, we are pursuing uh, the opportunity of having Americans stand by the cross. Now tell us, really but, uh, tell us, uh, of religion. Oh, let I'm me sorry, interject here. Let, let me interject here before we get to the project. Tell us about this cross. What cross are right. we talking about that the atheists want to get rid of? Well, I think that most of us might remember back on that horrible time uh, after the attacks at the World Trade Center, um, the, the, well, the rescuers found a steel, a steel beam in the shape of a cross. They found it in the rubble. And ever since then, that cross has been looked upon as a symbol of hope and inspiration and faith uh, it, it's really, it's, it's part of the history of that time. It's, it's uh, not only a part of the, the uh, September 11th history, but it's also just a symbol of, of so, what so many holds close to our hearts. You know, the cross, you know, represents so much to many Americans. You know, and, and, and so and sure. and, you know, and, and so many people took that as a providential sign from God. You find a cross in the middle of this rubble. This exactly. Is, this, yes. is, this is an attack and, that's obviously launched against America by people of a different religion, and here is a cross standing in the middle of the rubble as a sign that God still is present. God cares, symbol of hope and strength for the American yeah, people. Yeah, powerful. And it's, it's powerful. It's a 17 foot high cross section of steel beams, and that stood out in the midst of the rubble as, as, as a beam of hope. And we cannot allow uh, a small group of people to silence the majority. In fact, you know, I was about to say a little bit ago that, you know, in America we're supposed to have freedom of religion and not freedom from religion. We are supposed to be allowed freedom of expression. And uh, this is something that is historical in nature, and it, it promotes the hope that, that so many people found. People began praying. People began hoping, hoping, hoping again for the future. And turning back to Christ. Exactly. And, uh, you know, the fact that a small group wants to remove this because it offends them, frankly, it offends us that uh, someone would go after such an important, some, such an important piece of history and something so important to America. You know, exactly. It's, it, it's interesting. The Supreme Court just issued a ruling on prayer, legislative prayer, before city council meetings and so forth. And they said, look, they're perfectly constitutional. Prayers, even in Jesus' name, are perfectly constitutional. Exactly. Because, because there's no coercion involved. And the same thing, it seemed to me, would be true with this cross. Nobody's compelled yes. to look at it. Nobody's compelled to kneel in front of it. Exactly. Nobody's compelled to like what it represents. So there's no... Uh, coercion. So even though it's a symbol of Christianity, according to the Supreme Court, there there should absolutely be no problem with this thing being in a public place. Exactly. exactly. And, and yet, and yet, uh, people say there is, and it's so. It's really a, a warped 
view on on um, you know even Christian rights. You know, and uh, we're finding that it's little by little rights for Christians are just kind of being swept under the rug. And I think uh, that you, even you, though there have been great things, like you mentioned, the Supreme Court ruling, you know, there, that was certainly encouraging. But for yes. the most part, you know, there's there's fear tactics used, you know, just different ways to muzzle believers from, you know, sharing their faith in public or or simply privately practicing their faith these days. Well, you know, it's obvious with these atheists. I mean, they know about the Supreme Court ruling. They know that if there's no coercion, there's no violation, and yet they're pressing right ahead. Exactly. with their lawsuit, so it's a clear indication, look, just because the Supreme Court has issued the ruling doesn't mean that the culture war is over, doesn't no. mean they're going to lay down their weapons and go home. And, exactly. and you, you, you guys have also uh, expressed some concerns about the fact uh, of how the unidentified 9-11 victims' remains are yes. being handled. Take a minute to talk about that. Yes, and before we do, I just have to insert one thing that, you know, atheism is a religion, and uh, it's, it, they, they are not understanding the ramifications mm -hmm. of this, this action that they are mo moving to in order to sue and, and, and rip down the cross. This is something we need to, you know what, I would even venture to say with respect that we need to pray for these folks that do not pray. We need to pray for those that don't understand the hope that we have in Christ. And we can just really, really also uh, use this as an opportunity to express the hope and love that we have in Jesus with others, even though they do not yet have that hope. And so this is an opportunity. Every challenge offers us an opportunity. And it is our, our hope and prayer that this will be an opportunity to point people to true hope and faith in Jesus in a way that is not a forced conversion. We are not saying that anyone can be forced to become a Christian. That's between you and the Lord. You know, we believe that each person makes that decision of faith to receive Christ. So we're not saying, oh, you have to become a Christian by reciting whatever, and we cannot coerce people to become a Christian. That's not what Jesus said even, you know. And anyway, getting back to the point, though, uh, th yes, we are also about respecting the every human life, and the fact that they are they are having the unidentified remains be actually in this very obscure well, underground 70, location, seventy feet below the new museum, and yes, it's not in a dignified place. No, uh, I I think it should be uh, given the dignity. Uh, that it's the people, the victims deserve. Exactly, and their uh, families. I mean, we have families. a tomb, tomb for the, of the unknown soldier. We can do something so much better for them and afford them the dignity and honor and respect that every human life deserves. Yeah, you, so, you, put, something, you, yeah. Put, you put something 70 feet underground. You're literally burying it. You're trying to get it out of sight and exactly. out of mind. Yeah. Exactly, well, and, and to add to the to insult to injury, these, this was where they, they perished. This is where they were murdered by, by the, the jihadists. I mean, we, we're talking about why can't we have it in a peaceful location full of honor and dignity where, where loved ones can feel the, the, the comfort and, and respect that they so deserve. Well, and tell something us. I'd like to put out there is, uh, according to my understanding, the, the families were not given a, a say in the matter. Uh, they weren't even consulted with that. Exactly. Now. Notified okay, one last thing. We, we, we've got about 30 seconds left. If people oh. want to join your effort, you've got a Facebook page you've started on this. Yes. Tell us where they can get to that. Well, it's called I Stand with the Cross on Facebook, and we'd love it to see you there. We'd appreciate your support. Uh, and also, you can learn more about it at unitetheusa.org. Again, that's UniteTheUSA.org. UniteTheUSA.org. Talking here with Carrie and Stacy Stolting, the co-founders of Unite the USA. You can go to their Facebook page, I Stand with the Cross. Join them in their effort to protect the cross at the 9-11 site. Well, Carrie and Stacy, thank you so much for taking time with us. God well, bless you. And we'll you. talk to you again. God thank bless you so you much. Too. We appreciate you. We're fans of you. That's Great. for sure. Thank Keep you very up. much. Focal Point AFR Talk. We'll be right back. Stay with us.